and welcome to Remember When with Stephen Dory. Sorry, I had to change my top really quickly there. Um, I, I don't know why that's affecting me. Forget I'm, I had to change my top quickly, so therefore I'll forget the name of the podcast. <laughs> remember When with Stephen Dory, a podcast where I, Stephen Dory, ask my guests to remember when something happened in pop culture history that's had some sort of effect on them. I did ask you to do that, didn't I? Yeah. That's grand. Uh, you can now join the Patreon, Patreon patreon.com forward slash remember when and you can also buy tickets to see The Hendu which is on sale now in all your local theatres and will be out on tour in September, October and if you're not from the north you can, well if you are, you may, maybe go on holiday somewhere you could be in Glasgow for a day, I don't know but you can also see <laughs> Bridesmaids <laughs> which is on sale in about 50 theatres throughout England, Scotland, Wales and the south of Ireland so just go buy tickets so I can feed my unborn child thank you because I'm not breastfeeding this one <laughs> I am I don't know why anyway <laughs> this breast milk's not cheap yeah it's breast milk it's fucking it's okay, it doesn't like, grow on trees uh, it's a what do you call it life crisis thing we're having cost of living crisis you you fucking baby brain don't you I just did another podcast Jay. <laughs> like, what do you call that life crisis we're having <laughs> Uh, living. Um, yeah, funny. my guest today is comedian and podcaster Vittorio Angelone. What's happening? I think you've got the coolest name in um, comedy here. Do you think so? Mm. I mean, it's that. Except for me, the owner of the Hardy. Shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I say Doherty. Doherty, do you? Well, that's how you say Doherty and Derry. You say Doherty. Like when I moved to Belfast, and people were like, Doherty. "Do you mean Doherty?" And I was like. <laughs> no. well, you what is that? They say my dad always used to get annoyed. Um, you know Jamie Carragher? Yeah. Footballer? Yeah. My dad... Don't patronise me. Yeah. Sorry. But my dad <laughs> would always watch him and be like, his granny would say Carragher. And I'm like, right, but he says Carragher. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mad. Um, but yes, I don't know about the coolest name. I don't like, it's just your name, do you know what I mean? Yes, but also it's a name that, you know, yes, you might like... F- stumble across you'd like say it wrong is what I mean mm. I don't mean like stumble across it like online you'd be like this guy's street, in jail <laughs> like Biden's secret documents <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, it's an it's an original unusual name and therefore it's hard to forget hard to forget hard to remember at the yes, same time yes, hard to say time. correctly um, but it's the bog standard like if you can't think of a name for your child in the Angeloni family you call it Vittorio oh there's more than one I'm the eighth no. Yeah, my great. like kings. My my family's like there was eight vague. of them. <laughs> my, my family's <laughs> I mean, like, like they, have, they all have the same name. Don't they? They're all the fucking yeah, Billy yeah. and Charles and all kings and popes. <laughs> um, yeah, I uh, uh, yeah, there's fucking loads of Vittorios in my family. My great granddad Vittorio were vaguely famous in West Belfast because we had a nice cream shop that loads of people went to. Was it called Vittorios? Victors. Mm. Wanted to blend in a little bit, right? And then I got burned down by racists. <laughs> Is that did it? Yeah. By race people who are racist against Italians? Yeah, I didn't know that was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but what a way to melt the ice cream! Fucking <laughs> <laughs> burnt down an ice cream shop. That like uh, would just place become ever. a syrup shop, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, it just becomes a creamery. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Victor, though, that feels like that feels like giving under the man. Fuck them. It does, like, yeah, Victor. I've had people tell me to change my name Hi. for, like, acting, particularly. If I'm going up for auditions, people think, well, casting director will look at that and think you're Italian. An actual so Italian. Oh, I yeah. know, you know what I mean. So, well, yeah, but they, so they won't cast you for that. And I'm like, well, any casting director who thinks that is a fucking idiot. Yes. So I don't Do you know what wanna... happens when they read my name? They go, oh, talentless. We've heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring her in. <laughs> no point. They just bypass the whole racial thing and go, yeah, she's, we've heard she's shit. <laughs> Is that the Ukrainian one? From yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she sounded Russian. Fucking don't bring her in. <laughs> she can't do oh, you. Should get, you should cash in on that clout. You've played a Ukrainian. You should get. Is that the... something I want to be bragging about? Yeah. You've played a Ukrainian. You're supporting the cause. I know. You're basically but... Zelensky. Y- well, that's true. We both wear jogging bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> Night out in bunkers. Big on, big on cargo pants and photo shoots. <laughs> it's so funny. Anytime he was on screen, he was like in his full, like, comfortable army gear. <laughs> comfortable? <laughs> Do you like ar- army yeah. leisure? Yeah, army loungewear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. He would clean up if he if he released like a whole... OnlyFans? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was other things. I thought OnlyFans was only for dirt, but it's not. Well, the, so it was originally wasn't supposed to be... 
uh, but then it became the one that uh, whores use. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many? I want to see how many Vittorios are on there. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking loads, man. Vittorios. I've done sex no, work. No, I did though. a joke there about whores. And oh, I said about Vittorios. V- Vittorios. Doesn't matter. That's okay. <laughs> but I've done sex work. Have you? Yeah, yeah I sold hiccups during the pandemic. <laughs> no, what? <laughs> how long? You sold hiccups. So to early COVID, I did a tweet. Well, because I had hiccups and I was losing my mind and I went, uh, are hiccups a symptom of COVID? Because if so, I'm fucked. And then a guy from America messaged me and said, do you still have hiccups? And I said, yeah. And he said, can you send me a video? And I, and I said, how much is it worth to you? As a joke. And he said, $20. And no! I said, Cash at me, $20. <laughs> and I sent him a video of me hiccuping three times. <laughs> And to be fair, I Less don't... Less than $7 a hiccup? I don't know if he wanked to it. Hopefully. Well, I mean, I don't... Yeah, it would almost be weirder if he just watched it for fun. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, that has to be a... But this is the weird thing about sex work that I can't figure out, where... Oh, Lord, you know, going for the cause. Oh, me and the sex workers just walked no, our equal I, rights. But I don't know if I'm a sex worker, because he didn't say I wanked to that. All he said was, ha-ha, you're so cute. <laughs> 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 but isn't it weird that sex work is defined by uh, the consumer? Yeah, what they find sexual. So if you do anything, like those girls. Oh my God, I must have done those, so much sex work and I don't know. But this is the thing. People are wanking to this right now. Yes. This is sex work. Exactly. Oh, we're doing so well. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing. So it's like, if you do anything, like, girl, so say a girl takes a topless picture, that's not like, there's all like, like, boobs are overly sexualized, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's just a functional thing for whatever. Yeah. So, but someone wanks for that. So people would still, they, that's a sex worker. If you're taking, selling pictures of your tits, you're a sex worker. Yeah. So, but but you, selling hiccups, that doesn't feel like it's the same. So, but for that to be sex work, you both have to both agree that this is a sexual thing. You have to know you're being paid for something it's never sexual. Ex- it's very rarely explicit. Well, I think if someone goes, here's a tenner, give me a hand job, I think we both know it's sexual. That's obviously sex work. <laughs> All right. If you fuck someone for money, <laughs> that's definitely sex work. Oh, well, then I have. <laughs> 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 so much clearer now. <laughs> well, somebody asked me recently for pictures of my feet. I've, I've been asked a lot for pictures of my feet. Yeah. Are you on wiki feet? I keep mine secret. M- no, mine's are on wiki feet. Oh, are they? I blur mine in pictures. Do you? Yeah. Why do, you, why do you care? More sign-ups to Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> let, let them eat cake. Do you know what I mean? Let them wank to my second toe that's oh, longer than the so first. I don't mind. Because it's because me and Mike do our podcast and it's uh, we do it, we're just doing it in my living room. So we're just in like socks and yeah. there's people commenting on YouTube like more socks. <laughs> no. Yeah. I did this thing years ago for charity because I'm a good human. Yeah. Um, and it was like it was a Boko Haram fundraiser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do daily. It was called Doing Was Dare Day. I was only about 20. And I was like doing like a dare each day. People would sub- pay money towards Marie Curie. I was doing like a boxing thing, right? right? So I had to raise all this money to do the boxing thing. Who so the fuck would do charity boxing? It sounds stupid. Uh, it's so stupid. <laughs> Especially not funny people. Gems. <laughs> and, um, Gems! <laughs> <laughs> People not saying gimps in London enough. No, either I'm 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 low on my gimp quota. That's so funny. <laughs> and um, so I used to get so it started off where like so people were like, oh, eat like a habanero chili pepper, and I was like, oh, and then drink, and I'd film it and put it up, you know, on YouTube. Again, people definitely <laughs> wank into this. Go on. But this is it. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm like a notorious sex worker now. You didn't but know. for charity. For charity. That's like that woman, the the naked philanthropist. Do you remember her? Mary Carey. No, <laughs> she did it for the the bushfires in Australia. She did. So if you signed up, to, she put like a whole month of her OnlyFans to Australia, and she like sent millions to the charity. Oh, well, that's really Which weird, so isn't hot. it? But was she doing dirty stuff? Yeah. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? She so she would send you her like Dropbox of nudes or whatever. Imagine they just fans. sent the money back, and they were like, "We're all right." But here's we'll right. Take the fires out herself. So this is my question about sex work: is in the same way that like. If you, like, if I send someone videos of me hiccuping and they wank to it, yeah. does that make me a sex worker? But that feels like some element of sex work or whatever. But then, like, where's the line? Like, if my accountant does my tax return and I fucking come on it, <laughs> is, is he a sex worker? Um, I think he has been molested there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what that is. Feels like a violation. Like, somebody yeah. can, like, like if you buy a carrot at Tesco, that, like... 
that's just a carrot. But if you shove it up your ass, is Gary the, at the tails? <laughs> <laughs> so do your, your anal probe? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, it's a real fine line, isn't it? But then in the other direction, if you fuck someone on camera and no one wanks to it, is that just like a really bad sitcom? That's that's my wedding video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what that is. So yeah, we have to make money off it for it to be work. Yeah, but also for... Right, Sean, but, if but, you're watching. But, <laughs> <I'm only joking. laughs> but for it to be sex work, someone has to come about it. Someone has to come about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, oh, no, but money has to be exchanged. Someone... Yeah, so... so for, no, 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 so now your definition of sex is somebody has to come, whereas that's not my experience. Yes, you're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the way it is to me but so whenever I was doing these stairs though so it started off like really simple and then right so habanero and then where yeah, do we get and then, to and then it might have went to like um, do you know, like it was like the water the bucket water challenge and stuff like that at the time people are but so then people but then I was getting people sending like would you stand in white frilly socks and a dress and pour porridge over your head and all and then it was getting like <laughs> and no it was getting really would you one person was like would you stand in the shower frilly clothes with the water on singing my milkshake brings all the voice to the yard me. people were paying 20 quid a pop and I was knee deep through about 15 of these before I realised these cunts are being sick. <laughs> <laughs> So nice. It's all yeah, man. Milkshake brings to the boat, and then it's all oh my god, I'm being, I'm being that's sexualized, and I loved it. Too. You loved it. Mary Carey made a fortune. That's that's what she would have wanted. That is what that is what that I big think. Radioactive bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they set out to do. Yeah. Um. So we're just all about a sex. But actually, I had this conversation with Sean the other day about about sex workers, about how like, you know, it's such a thing that people be like, oh you know, they're they're all must be damaged, people who are doing that for a job. That's just so not true. Like uh, it's just a job like no other. And I th- no, I, it's I, not I, a job like any It's similar to comedy, and we are all fucked. All da- I, I'm not. Deona. No, 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 no. Deona. No, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Do you want me to show you my sertraline? <laughs> it says I'm fine. James sertraline tells me I'm fine. Yeah, it's talk a, to it at night time. Yeah, it says I'm, I'm absolutely fine. Do you think all comedians are damaged? Yes. Do you? There's got to be a reason you need that much validation from rooms full of people. Yeah. It's the only way to feel safe. It's the only way you know that everybody doesn't hate you is if they definitely like you. <laughs> but even then, do you mind if... do you, Are you just like happy for any reaction? If anyone... I walk past every single person in the street and go, they hate me. Do you? Yeah. But that's because they do. Yeah. But then when I'm on stage, at least it, I know that they're laughing or they're out. annoyed. But like, at least I definitely know. No, that is that is an issue, I think. Because if they hate me, then I was just right all along. But if they like me, then at least they don't hate me. But, and if you if, if you sat down with a, a psychiatrist or a therapist. I have many times. <laughs> right. many times. Go on. But then I think they would say for that is if you're trying to prove yourself right. Like, for instance, people who say, oh, I'm from a... a, a, a have a family and we're genetically bigger they're just trying that to prove sucks. that they're not wrong it's not because I eat 12 donuts for breakfast yeah it's a self-fulfilling prophecy yeah so they're trying to so is it that we are just like do you think I'm tr- trying to bomb on stage <laughs> is this what you've brought me in here to say <laughs> you do so badly on stage that I think you might be deliberately doing yeah that. you're self-sabotaging <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, but do you see comedians like that all the time do you ever yeah. see David McSavage he fucking deliberately tanks gigs why because for the he's he's told me once that he's so bored gig, of doing well. He's brilliant. He's so fucking yeah. funny. But he said if a gig's going too well and the audience have too much goodwill, he'll deliberately say the worst thing he can think of as soon as he walks on stage to try and lose everybody so he can earn the laughs. Again. That is like fucking doing your own lashes on your back. <laughs> what is the point in that? Give me the easy life. Ride the wave. Do you know what I mean? No. But he's like no reset to nothing. That is, no, that's wild. That's Mad. cruel in the audience to pay the tenor in. Yeah, but he does get them back. There's and a great I'm sure video, he does. There's a great video of him on YouTube at Top Secret Comedy Club in London. He walks on and just like... Say something horrifically racist. Dies, no dies for about two minutes because they didn't clap very much at the start and he was annoyed at them. Oh my God. And he goes on this two minute rant about racism and about like volunteers and all this stuff and charity and how he hates all of it. <laughs> and then he... And oh, I think I've seen this. And, and he just goes, "That's what happens when you don't give me a good reception." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you you post a shit ton of videos online now. I do, yeah. It's a yeah. like it's a lot of work, isn't it? Are you editing all these yourself? Yeah, nightmare. 
Always have done for like three years. It feels like I've been banging my head against the wall for such a long time. But it's working now. It's 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 finally clicked and worked. All of a sudden, your Instagram following has blown up. Mad. In like the past couple of months. Yeah, it was one video went massive where I did a Holocaust joke and people liked it. And some people didn't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all press is good press. But it was just a good bit of crowd work. You never know what's going to fly. It's never your most well-crafted joke. Yeah. It's never the one you're like, oh, it's a great routine. Which, it's always the one you're like, yeah, I just called him a is day. Is that the thing that's got the most views for you online is a Holocaust joke? Uh, no, the best one's a cancer one. Oh, is that the guy's coffin? <laughs> yeah, the woman in the front who's coughing. Or and I was like, woman? is that COVID? And then her grandson goes, She's got <laughs> no, her son goes, it's not COVID, it's cancer. I mean, that's perfect. It's great. That's what you it's want, so isn't fun. it? And then just three minutes making fun of her for having cancer. Do you do you like putting stuff up? Get up to get a reaction. Like, do you want people to have? Because I I the I remember putting a video up on TikTok of um so, talking about like the we were on the blame. Gets a clip from the blame game, and I'm mm. talking about like the NI football team or the Euros. Is that a thing? Is that mm-hmm. the real? Is that, is that a real sentence? Was that, the yeah. video? was that they were doing? The Euros is a thing. I yeah. have to learn it at the time and then I'll forget it because like, I don't care. Yeah, topical jokes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I read the news when I go, huh? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then, so I did a thing about like how we would be great at smuggling booze over because me, you weren't like booze over. Remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. We, like the, I was all like the Northern Irish team would be great at smuggling booze over. And the catastrophe in the comments blows are like, she's a Fenian. What, she's in Northern Ireland for it? Someone else going, no, she's actually a Protestant. I just checked. And someone else going, no, she went to a Catholic school. And it was just like an argument. About, well, whatever the fuck she is, she'd be saying this. And it's, it's called the North. People just all argue with each other. That is what just you like want. Just like thousands of comments so, of everyone arguing. And I was like, ah. That's what you want. Yeah. So like, I don't, I remember when I first started getting negative comments, I took it real bad. Like, Oh, really? It fucked me up. I was just like, oh But were my these God. comments about your comedy or about like your toes? <laughs> oh, my toes are blurred. Um, I can't remember. Like, it was about my comedy or my podcast. I found a thing, and I maybe shouldn't tell you this, but it's a brutal thing that I didn't know existed. I know what it is. What? Did we give me tea? It was a beginner. No. Now I'll tell you the other thing. <laughs> okay. I'm excited for this. <laughs> I discovered on Patreon, you can see there's like exit surveys. So when people unsubscribe when people from your Patreon, oh, right, uh. they give a reason. <gasps> Mate. If you ever want to, if you want to lose your self esteem, just scroll through why people who liked you enough to sign up to Patreon right. at one point decided to unsubscribe. Some of them were like, "Oh, my financial situation's changed. Absolutely grand. Weren't under the Holocaust." But some of them, some, just, people. some some people were just like, "This is <laughs> fucking <laughs> shit." Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of two pound a month. Well, the first because uh, I do a podcast with Mike Rice and we do. With the first Patreon episode we ever put out, the first comment was a guy who enjoyed the first public episode, signed, signed up, up the for the Patreon and said, never regretted signing up for something so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd been in the army. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So all that stuff, but then you just get used to it. You get And you get used to the fact that it's good for the algorithm. Yeah, it's yeah. good, it just gets more eyes on it. <clears throat> and like, I, I did, we had a clip about Jordan Peterson recently, we were making fun of him. And it was fairly even-handed because I said in the clip, I've just listened to him on Joe Rogan because yeah. I think he's interesting on some stuff. But we were just slagging him off because he's kind of lost the fucking run of himself. And the fucking, the arguments, the number of people just calling us gay, retarded, incels. Like, it's fucking mad. Incels? Yeah. What's an incel? We, where have you been? Well, I don't know. Craig Avon? <laughs> <laughs> What's an incel? An, in, an involuntary celibate. Oh. Little freak boys that... Uh, oh, nobody a Bucky? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's, but that's what it is, isn't it? <laughs> the whole world calls it incels. And there he goes, nobody a Bucky. <laughs> nobody will bang that. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's what it is. I've never heard. Also, it's way... Wake- they're the ones that shoot up schools, incels. <gasps> okay. Because they're like, women won't fuck me, so everyone should die. I didn't make a few phone calls. <laughs> But I've never, oh yeah, because they blame, they fully blame women. But like, that's, a, like if somebody had said to me, like or like said to a fella and you growing up, oh, you're an incel, like they'd have been like, okay, whatever. But if someone goes, ah, you're stinking, no one will like that's way worse to say, but it means it the is, same but thing. It's just, you know, language evolves and stuff. Oh, fuck. But I think, Ger- is it Germany that uh, they yes. pay for prostitutes for incels to prevent? I think they should. Like terrorism? That absolutely should be a thing. I think if you've got to a certain age and you've got massive sexual frustration because you haven't got the book yet, your man dash should sort it out. Could you go mad? Like even like uh, like if you just haven't, if you go through like a dry spell. Yeah. 
you lose your mind. Yeah. You just turn into this like fuck. You turn fat. You can sort yourself out. Yeah, but it's like it's not the same thing. Exactly. Thing. Yeah. Better. <laughs> so much. Yeah, for women, yet again. Saves a lot of time. <laughs> things need, saves a lot of time. Things need done right now. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I ain't got half an hour. <laughs> um. So what are we saying? So and I. So that's that's what incels. Do you think we should fund whores oh, for yeah. incels? Well, they don't need to be whores. If they're fucking people for money, they're whores. Do you know what I think? That's so bang on. <laughs> <laughs> no, hundred percent. I know somebody who needs that. <laughs> His name's Dave Elliott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he needs the book. Yes, he's miserably married with two children. He needs. He's. Can you become an incel again? Is oh, I don't know. You don't have to be a virgin. For you don't have to be a virgin to be an incel. Uh, yeah, I think you do in the common. So much criteria. It. Yeah. Well, it's like there's isn't there priests that have had sex and then become a priest? Which yeah, feels like cheating. Mm. I th- I think what happens is if you've decided you're going to be a priest, it's like diet starts on Monday. <laughs> you're gonna run out. You just fuck loads of grown ups while you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just like just <laughs> <laughs> do access to <laughs> full adults after you become a priest. <laughs> But it is like diet starts one day, so you're gonna go out eat the eat the, all the fucking donuts and the pizza at night. Priests are gonna go out and do all the booking. There's on a, a comedian that did that, not became a priest, but he was a pedo, and he um, he only started doing comedy after he'd been arrested and was awaiting trial. Why? What? what, what? I think it was on his bucket list to do stand up. Oh. So in the year while he was awaiting trial for like on human his trafficking and list. nonsense, he but yes, what. <laughs> <laughs> So, he, I, well, that makes sense. He, st- he did comedy for a year before yeah. he went to prison forever. Fair fucks to him. I mean, not for being a pedo, obviously, out there. It's not nice. But for trying to stand up. But for trying, for doing the, if you were, if someone said to you, about you're going to go to jail in six months, what shit do you want to get done before then? What would you say? Fuck loads of kids. <laughs> <laughs> fuck's sake. Do the opposite of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Commit all the crimes they're accusing me of. <laughs> I'm going down anyway, yeah. fuck's sakes. But if what you're in life, I'd kill someone. Would you kill someone? Mate, this is right. This is my uh, this is my thesis on what it is to be a modern man who wants to be like progressive and whatever. Yeah. You still have all the violence that men have within them. Yeah. So all modern men want is a moral reason to kick the fuck out of someone. Oh yeah, they want it. They still want to kick the fuck out, but they want to do it for a good reason, yeah. for a good cause. I walk down the street hoping I see someone harassing a woman so I can murder them. Oh, oh, that's so that's so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I shouldn't one. hope for harassment. Yeah, I know, but then it's one, although it's like entrapment, but for a good cause, because you're getting rid of the bad guy. I want to kill someone, but I want to be ethical about it. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice about it. Like, I want to fair trade murder you're, someone. You're <laughs> <laughs> I want to organically <laughs> slice some cunt up. <laughs> I, like, could you actually, do you know whenever I used to work in a restaurant, right? I used to like, be a waiter years ago, and I, the, the chef one time let me, he goes, well, come in here, close your eyes, take your knickers off. <laughs> no, he didn't. He says, come in, close your eyes and take this knife and let me stab a massive hunk of meat. And it was, he was like, Is, that's exactly like stabbing someone. I don't know how he knows the comparison, but it was just this big thing of meat. And he goes, just close your eyes and shove the knife in. And it's pure freaky. You feel like you've stabbed somebody. So wow. I've got that out of me. You've got the need to stab someone out of you? Oh, I got it back when I'm out, Sean. But before that, it, <laughs> it had left the system. Yeah. But it's it's disgusting. The feeling of just the... Fucking... Like, do you know, like that gritty, it's yeah. fleshy. Like a, and then it's like a crunch, the noise of it going through. Oh. This is what people are going to be wanking to. ASMR. Me ASMR. And a big leg of lamb. A stabbing, yeah. A big leg of lamb. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is there something you would do if you weren't doing comedy? Like if you if you were like, okay, I, I can't pursue comedy anymore. I'm cancelled. What else would you do? I mean, it's inevitable um, that you're gonna get cancelled. I am such a psycho that I like I'm so obsessed with comedy that <coughs> it feels like I couldn't do anything else. But what I did before, I was a classical musician before. Oh, why? I was a percussionist, so I played the xylophone and all that. So probably that. But then a lot of that's teaching and skills. So yeah, if I was can- it's less depending th- on the direction of the cancellation. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not. But I what if know. there was a dream, like a dream thing you could do? Like if you were like, oh, I'd be a, I'd be a, I don't know, the president. <laughs> <laughs> Get to stay in the Grand Central. Yeah, 
Yeah. I don't. This is like it's so fucking gay to be like I'm living my dream. I. But I, like, what is. I'm so obsessed with comedy. That's yeah. like the like it's the best. I feel like you are obsessed with comedy. Like to mate. Yeah. I'm a freak, mm. and like I know, I watch everybody's sets. I love watching other comedians. I know everybody's like I'm like an like a Rolodex encyclopedia of just seriously bits. Like my like it fucks all my mates off who aren't comedians because my whole way of interacting with people is a topic comes up and I go, oh, Tommy Tiernan has a funny bit about yeah. that, yeah, and then I do someone and else's like, bit. They're like, we don't care. And they're like, can we talk to you? Yeah. And I'm like, but other people have thought about this more than me and yeah. they're funny. There's like a six-year-old going, you're teaching me xylophone, stop talking about Tommy <laughs> Tiernan. <laughs> I don't know who that man is. <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like, I I don't watch comedy that often. I, th- I know you should watch it as, as a comedian. Like, it's how you get better as well. Uh, it's how you... uh, sometimes, but sometimes you get caught up in other people's like cadences. And and I, and I also think if you're highly impressionable, you can mould in. So I so am. Yeah. I for the first like year and a half, I was just doing a Mickey Bartlett impression. Yeah, there's a few people doing a Mickey Bartlett impression. Yeah, it's called the Northern Irish comedy scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But everybody like you. you I go on stage be, and be like, yeah. "What's up, motherfuckers?" <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm like you just and you just get out of it. Like I've gone into different. Uh, Modes of different people. I'm in a shite. Uh, <coughs> shite. I'm in a slight um, Shane Gillis ish, like just my physicality, like two hands on the mic at the minute. Uh-huh. And I just, you just catch yourself and go, oh no, that's not, that's not you. You've just watched too much of that guy recently. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Going like after every joke. But and then, like, you, but you have thing. to catch yourself as well. You yeah. Like I don't really, you don't realize that you're that impressionable, but you are. Yeah, and well, this it's. I think that's a tricky thing where you spend a lot of time basically trying to act like a comedian on stage mm. and you get those people doing the like the rhythm of what they think a comedian they do like Chris, like Chris Rock yeah. like they say all the premises three times yeah 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 they're yeah, like yeah. Protestants and Catholics are different the yeah, thing yeah. is Protestants, Protestants and, Catholics. and Catholics are different yeah. and like and Catholics are different <laughs> <laughs> that's an acting exercise do you want know wank that's an acting exercise we have to do at uni Meisner I'm so wanky no you just you just keep repeating Oh yeah, and the different single main uh, single main stress of the sentence, and you stress different words and say yeah. it different every time. And, and we have a full conversation. Keep turning the soil. That's Meisner. Oh, did you say Meisner? Yeah, yeah. I thought you said Wayfair, like the people that sell furniture. No, and I was like, no. Meisner technique. Is it Meisner? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. And you used to be like Protestants, Catholics, are different. And we would have a full no, conversation. Protestants and Catholics are different. Protestants and Catholics are different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking no, no, weird. keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> drama school stuff. I auditioned for drama school. Wanky. It's so weird, but they get you. Wanky. Because when you when everybody's doing it, then you're like, well, this is what you do. Yeah. Like even in the audition process, there was like workshop days and stuff. Yeah. And at the start, they're like, oh, pretend you're spaghetti. Yeah. And yeah. I, I was like, so I was like, fucking cooked or uncooked. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you're also like racist, there, like, <laughs> just because I'm called Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. Um, you be a spaghetti, you be a spud. By the end of it, they're like, yeah, and like the, there's oil being poured over the spaghetti, and you're, you're just on the floor, like, I'm fucking <laughs> <laughs> You're like, never have I felt more spaghetti. You like. just buy in, and you're just like, well, everybody's know, fucking rolling on the floor. I think it's brainwashing, because I think you get so sucked under that world where you think this is never necessary to the craft of an actor yeah. and then you talk to like really good established actors and they're like just say your lines yeah just say your lines and do them no more there's just a really funny uh, actor I know and I won't name her because uh, me she, uh, might get in trouble no no you can name me <laughs> she was in a play in London and everybody else she hadn't been to drama school but they were all like rather yeah, like, yeah, yeah. or like acting out the wazoo and um they had this bit in, in the play where they had to, it was basically, they'd just run over a big hill and they had to arrive at the house and like be like out of breath when they came onto the stage. Yeah. And all these rada people were sprinting up and down. To actually stage, be out of breath. Like running. And she was just stood there, side of stage, just like. Yeah. And they were like, why aren't you, why aren't you running? And she goes, oh, because I can do this. And just opened the door and went. <laughs> yeah, I can just act it. Oh, yeah, no, no, seriously. Like, I've been backstage in plays before and you see actors and even, like, yes, you do a wee bit of a warm up, like a yeah, vocal warm up and, all, and a yeah, physical yeah. warm up. So you're limber when you yeah. get on stage or whatever. But I have seen actors do silly shit and you're like, you need to pause and take a second. Like, even whenever, I, my one of my first, do you remember Sketchy from here? No. 
It was a, a sketch show. This is my problem with the, and I was worried about this coming on this podcast. I have almost no pop culture knowledge. Uh, well, it was a sketch show. We like loads of the comedians were in it. No one, BBC Northern Ireland. It was like, I mean, ten years, maybe twelve or thirteen years I ago. I wasn't even born. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a mammal seat there. Um, and we, so we, I was not, but I. That actually was so irrelevant to my story. I just wanted to say. <laughs> I was in a sketch show once. Thank you. So what I think I was filming that around the time when I was like Billy Big Balls going on to do drama. I got into like I was. I did also didn't go to drama school. I studied drama at yeah, university. Yeah, yeah. Completely different. Where'd you study? <clears throat> Queens. Johnny Hardon. Yeah. Jonathan Harden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's and, a good podcast. Yeah. He's a good guy. And then I went in and I was like acting big. I was like, oh, I've just been like filming this BBC show. That's why I'm late. I was filming three days ago, but I just turned up late anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just like the Romeo chicken for yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had to be a bag of sand for like ages. It's like half the, like half the day. And you had to like slowly become like let sand release from the bag. And you became, and whoever was like, the, do you know what it feels like? Do you know if you go to kids, stand up against that wall and the last one to turn around Get surprised, and then they just all spend all day doing that, and then the parent can go sit down and have a coffee. I felt like the teacher was like, "Used to be a bag of sand, and the, the one yep. who takes the longest to become like one grain, you know, will yeah. get their degree today." Yeah, but it's fucking mad because I the music I studied at music college, but it's part of a drama school, uh-huh. so it's the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. Yeah, so people are on the acting course, and it's so funny. Like mates of mine, where I was like, "Oh, do you want to go watch the football at the pub?" And the first year of acting, they do this um, the animals project, where they all get given an animal, not like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Assigned an animal. Yeah, yeah. They don't get fucking handed Assigned an soft. identity of an animal. Yeah, and they have to, like, practice being that animal. And then there's a showcase where for an hour and a half, they're all, yeah, they all... Yeah, They create a zoo, basically. So, like, the teachers, like, walk through and they're all in their little areas being that animal. I just don't believe that benefits anybody. Yeah, my girlfriend had to be a camel for an hour and a half. Oh, did uh, she get the hump? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But my, I was like, oh, do you want to come... It was a Saturday, so we were all off, and he's like, do you want to come to the pub to watch football? And my mate Martin, who's from Paisley, just outside Glasgow, he goes, no, man, I have to practice my tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate this course. Fucking <laughs> what? Like, it's the I worst. I have to practice my tiger. I know. It's so funny. It's me Celtic tiger. It's so funny. Do you have any, like, little, because I always touch my toes before I go on stage. I have a pee. Okay. If I don't, I'll pee on stage. That's a pregnancy thing. (laughs) No, do you know what I always do is I say the first few sentences that I'm going to say in my head. And I do that before plays as well. If you know your first couple of lines, Mm. the rest will come. Like you'll remember the rest. Like before you go on stage, like a lot of the time, if you're doing a play, I suppose, before you go on, you're like, well, I don't remember a thing that happened the past month. I don't remember any of it. We're yeah. going to have to make it up. Yeah. And you go out and, you, and if you just repeat your first couple lines, then you, when you go out, the rest will just follow. Yeah, it's just getting off that, like the neural pathways and then you just start going. Yeah. Uh, but see in plays, I'm so bad for, I'll know my lines, but see the overarching structure of the play? Yeah. I haven't a fucking clue. I'll know everyone's lines. But I've never done a play without having the script side of stage. So when I'm off stage, you I'm like, what the fuck scene's next? Aye. Uh, and I fucked it up once. Memory. I was Ooh. in a I was in a Shakespeare and I he came off stage I and I <laughs> didn't even know he was sick. <laughs> yeah. She said I know. <laughs> Did she not send a card? <laughs> I'll bring a lasagna up to the house. Yeah. Um You fucked up lines. What play was it? What Shakespeare play? I think it was As You Like It. Okay. And um came off stage. What's would you know? Charles the wrestler is the, towards the start. Anyway, um, came off stage and I turned to the, another actor and I went, "It's this <clears> scene next, isn't it? That I'm not in." And he was like, "Yeah, yeah you're fine." Yeah. I was like, "Sweet," and it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> so I didn't check my wee script that I always have side of stage. Um, I did a one woman show before, and that's really tough mm. because if you skip a bit and you end up like, say, you just like. So you're, you're on stage for the hour and you're doing a full show, a play. Yeah. And then if you like, if you like start, like, because you mind map the stage, basically, yeah. do you know what I mean? You're like, well, this bit leads me to this bit, which leads me to this bit. And you physically see the bits yeah. throughout the stage. And if there's so many times I've went, oh, I've skipped like half an hour. And if you like skip forward a bit and then you're like, well, this show's now going to be only half an hour long. Yeah. People are going to be ripping. But it never happened. But every single show, you would have like an out of body experience going, I've yeah. skipped half this. You just this. leave and you go, fuck, 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 fuck. fuck. Happening yeah. in Leicester, I skipped 10 minutes of my tour show in Leicester. Oh. 
Yeah. And it was just like... Was there any callbacks that you fucked because you didn't say it? There was one I couldn't do, but the main one was fine. But like, I once I... Because the, the show kind of takes like a turn at the end. And it's so locked in now. I've done it so many times because I did the Fringe, previewed it for the Fringe. Yeah, yeah. And turn it. Like, it's so set. It is that thing where I'm like... It's so hard to get back to what it, I was like. And the, it takes like a completely tonal shift yeah. after a little while. So I'm like, that would jar with everything. You it wouldn't make it any now. sense to do that mm. now. So I'm just like stuck and we just, that just hasn't happened. Yeah. You'd be gutted. show, I was just raging. Though, yeah. for, so, so for the last 20 minutes of the show, I was just raging. He just stage, angrily delivered. Just He's behind like, the eyes was just like, you fucking dickhead. Yeah. You're a dickhead. You're Blaming shit. the audience. You're shit. You don't deserve this. All these people paid for tickets and you skipped 10 minutes. Like you a really should idiot. speak to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is but I was issue. just sat there freaking out. But yeah, so this Shakespeare, the worst bit was um, the people on stage were supposed to be like looking for someone and then they were supposed to like, so I was supposed to like appear and but they were supposed to be like, what's that noise? And then I appear. I. So oh, they just said, to... what's that noise? And then fucking nothing happened. Oh, no. And it was like, open a night. You were like having night. a latte somewhere? I was, just, I was just sat there outside the stage. And they were just left on stage. So nothing. how was it resolved? Well, they they just, they like, they were very good. They were like, I swear I heard something. <laughs> 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 like, like, kept improvising. But could you imagine? And then they're like, oh, it doesn't but matter. The, director, the audience would be like. The director was in the audience and like burst into the wings. I was like, Vittorio? <laughs> Oh no! So I went on stage and I was like, "Sorry, the tube was late." <laughs> was this part of Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> was this part of your course? No, that was after I did a, like a Shakespeare theater above a pub thing. Oh yes. I was trying to be. <clears> I did a show well. before, and one of the actors we had like a it was like a twelve minute scene. It was a really long scene, just mm. him and I on stage, and he came on, blocked, <gasps> couldn't remember a thing. Oh my god! And I had to do both. So we were going. You're, you're asking me what I want for my dinner? Well, I want this. Yeah. You don't think I should have it? I should. I can yeah, tell by the look yeah. in your eyes. You don't think Subtext I should have it? And you're just like, so funny. Having, to, having to do both bits. And it's it's just as well that I know everyone's lines in, in a show. Like, I, I, yeah. I, I can really easily learn lines. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're just like looking at this person going, any minute, you're going to keel over and this is going to, I'm going to make a part of this. Yeah. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I'm yeah. Going, I know. I'm going to create a new play on the fucking spot. Well, that's worse for me. Like, I don't mind too much if I fuck up stand up because it's just me yeah, and I can deal with it generally yeah. particularly in like short if you're doing a 20 like there's no like narrative arc that you have to yeah, stick yeah, to you're like, just you can set. just throw stuff back in and do whatever Yeah, but it's when it's the longer show but I felt so bad that I'd left them too on stage yeah there was just no lifeboat at all they were just it's fuck. worse being the fucker upper than the yeah I don't upper. care if I fuck up my bit yeah, yeah I yeah. care like fucking somebody because that's my responsibility yeah. to do that but have you ever seen apparently early episodes of French Fresh Prince of Bel French Prince, Prince of Bel Air Fresh Prince of Bel Air Will Smith mouths everyone else's lines oh yeah it's so cute do you know who does that Her. Tim McGarry <laughs> Tim McGarry does that during everything during Get My Head Piece during Perfect Ulster like a radio show that we do a sketch show during like not during the game game because he doesn't know what you're going to say but he'll sit there and if, we're, if you're if you're like he's writing a script and there's four or five of us in a room reading it he'll be mouthing all your bits and like laughing along it's very endearing and encouraging yeah. and psychotic it's <laughs> so fucking mad at the same time yeah. my dad always gets annoyed at people who he can tell is reading an auto cue. I mm. think he gets annoyed at Tim McGarry for it because you can tell he's reading it. Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, I mean, what does want him to do? Remember it? Well, this is the fucking thing. My dad's just like, you should just learn it. And I'm like, you know, he does it like every fucking week. It's yeah. brutal. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff to learn. Of stuff to learn. And it's all very word specific. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, it's word jokes, play and, and it's, it's jokes. jokes that you don't know. <clears throat> yeah, haven't practiced and it's just. Whereas when the rest of us are writing material for the blame game, it's a lot more fluid because it's like bits rather well, yeah, than jokes. You, yeah, yeah, because you've got like, oh, you do the bit about that. Yeah. yeah, the bit about that is what yeah. I do. The bit about that. Yeah. yeah, so it's a lot. It's a lot less. There's a lot less pressure to say it word for word of yeah. what you've written. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what pisses me off when you see people doing roast battles and they have all their jokes like, on their written phone? out. I'm like, it's five jokes. Have you done a roast battle before? Yeah, I've done two. I only do them against marginalised people. <laughs> <laughs> the easy jokes. Yeah. Easy targets. I did one against William Thompson. Did you? <laughs> did you? Yeah. When was his roast battle? Ages ago. It was at the Pav. Was it? Yeah, ages ago we did a roast battle. I don't slag to say, but people, that's why I didn't go. Oh, mate. I <laughs> you <just> do. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? I said, you know, William has struggles with um, relationships. <clears throat> uh, you know, he, he often gets gets uh, dumped 
after the first date. And I think that's quite sad because we should really be cutting down on single use plastic. <laughs> oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> that's fucking brilliant. You should let him, did you, he should let him use that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Single use plastic. Yeah, that's that's his name of his next show. <laughs> Um, he is doing, he's got a show coming up too, I think, doesn't he? Yes, he's doing The Fringe. I'm excited for it. So we previewed together in London. I'm really so you were um, up for a newcomer last year? How yes, I got nominated for a newcomer. Um, uh, it was great. Well, like very surprising because um, I kind of slagged off the whole awards thing. Yeah, in the show. it's so funny. But it was like, I don't need an award to validate my skill and, and my talent. Work, but I feel, oh, fucking, yeah, yes. This is the thing. I was like, fuck everybody. Fuck the industry. <coughs> fuck this. Fuck that. Yeah. And then as soon as I got nominated, I started crying straight away. Did you? Straight away. But what happened was, so it got announced at half past two. And my show was at two. So I was in the middle of my show. Aye. So I didn't know. So do you, was there no, um, were you not told that you were being considered? You know if you're on the shortlist. Yeah. Because the panel keeps showing up to the fucking yeah. show and it's a 60-seater room. And you're okay. like, oh, there's him again. Oh, they come multiple times? Yeah. Uh, and there's loads, there's like 11 of them. Fucking hell. Yeah, so they all come at different times. And then once you get nominated, they all come again. Yeah. And like a bit, like see all the nominees. Yeah, to again, decide who's winning. Basically. And um, when, when they came again, actually, a BBC producer's phone went off in the middle of the show. And I screamed at him, I'm trying to win an award here. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't know, you fucker. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was a funny, it was funny because I was in the show, so I didn't know. Yeah. And I didn't really want to, I tried to get people to not tell me when the nominees got announced, like mm-hmm. what day, because I was like, I'll just be stressed until that day. So I didn't want to know, but then somebody was like, how are you feeling about Wednesday? I was like, fuck, Aye. that's when that is. Yeah. So I come out of the show and I'm just doing my wee bucket and the card reader wasn't working and I was like, fuck, I'm going to lose. There's card readers now at the Fringe? Yeah. I haven't been in five now. years. Yeah. Three years, five I mean, years. Fucking card readers now? Yeah. For a pay as you go? For the bucket, yeah. That's unreal. It's class. That's brilliant. Of course there's card so readers. So you can't, you can't fuck That's about now. People money. can't be like, oh. yeah, yeah, there's no excuse. Yeah. It's perfect. Although the homeless people, homeless people have it now too, don't they? Card readers? Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. We're all only fans. <laughs> yeah. So you were waiting with your bucket? Yes, I was waiting. My card reader wasn't working. I was like, fuck, I'm going to lose out on loads of the donations after the show I was raising. And um, so I was kind of like fussing about doing whatever. And then Amy Gladhill, who was the comedian who was in the room immediately after me. Yeah. She comes up the stairs. And I was like, all right, how's it going? And she was like, do you not know? And I was like, what? She's like, you got nominated. And I dropped the bucket and started crying straight away. Oh, my God. But what's so funny is my agent at the time was like in the green room. Because he told everyone in the venue, don't tell him, don't tell him, don't tell him. I want to be the one to tell him. <gasps> and he didn't get to tell me, which I think is so funny. Is that Christian? Oh, no, <laughs> no Chris. Chris. Oh, <laughs> that is hilarious. It's really, really <laughs> funny that he wanted his big moment. Yeah, yeah, he didn't and get it. And then Amy was just like, oh, you got nominated. Yeah. And I was like, ah. When was he, was he not there at all? Did you, did you, like, was he in the vicinity? Yeah, yeah, he came okay. over and I was already crying. He was oh, like, yeah. fuck. He's like, way upset. I've got good news for you. You've been nominated. <laughs> I was like, no, fuck up. <laughs> Well, that's, fuck, that's so fucking exciting. Because obviously then that's spiralled a few things for you, didn't it? Well, yes. Uh, like, it seems to have done good stuff. And then you have a bunch of meetings where nothing happens. Yeah. You meet with the production company and they go, just just wanted to meet you, have a general meeting. That. And you go, I've got ideas. And they go, yeah, go for it. And then they go, well, those sound great. Um, Cool. See you. Never. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the story of my life. And you were like, right, what? Yeah. So I think there's when you're at the naive, very early stage of your career and you have general mates and you're like meetings with like producers and like production companies and you're like, I've just met with this ones from BBC yeah, yeah. and they know my name and they asked me for an idea and I think I'm getting a six part series. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. cop ten years later you're all I, I don't think I've got time to go to that general but you're like, What's the point? Well, this is the thing. So I, now I, like my focus is just so stand up because I know yeah. Did that work? So I just put all stuff online. Yeah. People like it. Just do that. Tickets. Like, it's fine. Like, I'd love to write a script and do a thing. It just takes so fucking long. Do you think there's a wild, um, there's a wild pressure on comedians too to have a sitcom in their back pocket? Yeah, why? Do you know, it's like everyone has to have a, a great yeah. sitcom idea and like a full... You spend eight years trying to get it made and then it doesn't get made. Yeah. And people, like, people make a living from writing scripts that never get made. People don't know this. You get the thing called options. Yeah. Where they pay you for an to idea. To develop the idea. just keep working on the script. And then it can never get made. But that's people's whole livings. Yeah. There's writers who have never had anything made. Yeah. Who have a, who make a living from make writing. Make loads of money. Yeah. Just writing scripts. That no it's one called sex work. Like, <laughs> that is sex <laughs> work. Somebody's but it's like, it. I, I'm just like, I want to make stuff that people fucking see. Yeah. 
So that's I mean, why all my energy. But then you can't up. foresee that. You don't know. They have to go through the process. You don't know. Do you mean? You can't yeah. go, this is, here's, here's an option. <clears throat> and we're definitely going to make this one. That doesn't happen. I'm yet. just bad. I'm a fucking psycho with notes as well. Anytime anyone gives me feedback, I'm like, fuck you. You never yeah. know. Yeah. Like, I just hate it. And then I'm such a wee, like, any authority figure. I have such problems with it. With the show that I have written recently, The Hendry, the mm. tickets available now. Um, the one of my favorite scenes. If we just go back and they roll, we just don't get that scene at all. And that's all. That's my favorite scene. That's the funniest scene. And they're yeah. like, "Yeah, it's funny, but it's just there's no place for it in this show." And I was like, "What if I take all the lines and put it in a different place?" <laughs> 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 and they were like, "Okay." I literally took all of the lines because I got like all these jokes, yeah. and I just went right. They're no longer at laser tag, and they're now in a water park. <laughs> and that's just just, that is what I did. Jokes. It's all the same jokes. Same instead of a, their guns, they've got water pistols. And so I just like this this scene. This scene's fun and silly. Yeah. And you have made me get rid of it, and I'm just ch- I'm gonna just change. Th- at the top where it says where they are and that's it that's so funny and then I, they were like yeah that works now yeah in- internal water park yeah um, <laughs> I uh, I had a freak out the other day because I saw a TikTok of the creators of South Park talking about like storytelling and it's going to make me like freak out about my next shows and stuff because it said about how you're supposed to do it how you're forming your stories yeah but it was just a simple tip that I think does make so much sense right he was like Share it. you never want to say and then it always has to be therefore no. or but. So see if you if you've moments happening in a show, see if it's like this happened and then this happened. Well then it always has to be causal. There always has to be this cause this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or this or, contradicts this. Yeah. It can't just be like this thing and then a separate thing happened. It's like if this thing happened, therefore that caused this. It's the exact same thing you were talking about the the one woman show. Yeah. It's like I move oh, here, yeah. which makes me move to here, which causes this next bit. So that's what I find is like scripts where it makes sense and yeah. it follows a through line. It's much easier to remember because you're like, well, everything kind of tumbles forward because yeah. it's like, well, because I've said this, I have to say this and then I have to say this. And then I, I have find to say this. when I write though, I'm putting 90% of the emphasis on it being funny. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Tr- and then I, and then I go, oh, not none of this makes sense because of the first half of this, she was married, and by the end, you know, she's talking about how she's been single her whole life. Do you know what I mean? Like, but that's second drafts. Yeah, first that's drafts the make no stuff. sense. But pro- proper good writers would do all the character work and the like, the through line, and then they would pump in some jokes at the end. And I'm like just writing thousands of dirt jokes, and then just figure just weaving it together fi- weaving it together that's what you should out. do like yeah. um, was it Woody Allen when he's working on a film he's constantly coming up with ideas for scenes and moments for mm-hmm. the next film and he just writes them on a scrap of paper puts it in a drawer in his house closes it never looks at Nets it Nets it together when he they? finishes this film he tips the drawer out onto his table and he's got all these scenes and moments that he knows are good and goes right how do we get them all into one thing Oh, that's great. Yeah, and that's how stand-ups write that's, shows. Yeah. That's how I the wrote bits. my show. I was like, these are all routines that work in comedy clubs. How do we make it yeah. have a sense of through line and forward momentum through yeah. any of it? And I have, I find American comedians are brilliant for that. I find like watching American comedians, they, their oyer always seems very seamless and like they don't tend to do that and then. Like it's sort of like everything leads to the next thing. Oh, do you think so? I think the opposite sometimes. Do you? I think American comedians will just go like... Uh, like oh, I think they bit. get away with murder, but I think... But they'll do a bit and then they'll sense. just go, I also like football, and then oh, they'll no. just start talking about something else. We were watching different American comedians. Who are you? Who are you? Who's shit? <laughs> who's shit? Who's not? Um, what's your Remember When moment? Remember When moment? Well, you said like a thing from pop culture you into, but like I said, I think I'm shit for this show because I was so detached from... I was a freak. Yeah. But Did I you not follow any like trends? No. Were you not the guy who like got the thing? No, I, people said I was a wee bit like sane when I was a kid, you know, like sane, like kind of not quite emo, but a bit more co- like a colourful emo. Basically. Oh, that must have been a Belfast term. Sane? Yeah, it probably was. Oh, we we had freaks. <laughs> no, my brother was a freak. <laughs> Did she not have freaks? <laughs> and Derry, we had... so rude. It's so rude, but they, but they were self-confessed. That's what self-confessed we had. Self-confessed the, 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 the fr- There were the emos, the goths, and the freaks. What's, what separates a freak from an emo or a goth? So, less emotional. <laughs> less emotional. So, the freaks would have been like... The, so, the goths would have had black leather, black... You know, I, I, Marla Manson were the goths. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? The um, emos would have been like... Do you know, like, stripey socks... And like the hair down over the yeah, face the and the pale vans. makeup. Yes, all that. The freaks would have been the skateboarders. 
I think, yeah, that's seen. That would be seen. Yeah. I always dressed like a skateboarder, but never skateboarded. Yes, with my brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was me, but then... But in terms of like TV or like pop culture, like I know so many references just because Family Guy referenced them. Right. But I don't know the actual, the actual fucking thing. reference. But the only thing I do know, which is insane because it's not, it was never on TV when I was growing up. It was always reruns. I watched Bullseye all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. As a child? Yeah. Right. I watched Bullseye. <laughs> but like from the 80s, like old episodes yeah. of Bullseye, I watched it all the fucking time and I thought it was the best fucking thing ever. Um, I I never have watched Father Ted. Wow! So I you're a know, trans ally. <laughs> I'm an incel. <laughs> 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 Do you know, like um, I I know loads of references, and I can go, oh, I that's like oh, you a, will, you will, you will, you and will, all those will. things. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I get yeah, it. But I was just resting in my account. Uh, I hear you're a racist now, Father. All that people stuff. People will say, "Do you know that thing in Father Ted?" And they'll say something. I go, "Yes, I do," but I've never seen it. I know it through osmosis. It's just like I've heard of it. Do you know what I've started doing? I've started watching um, uh, movies that I haven't seen before. They've been out for ages. Yeah, movies. I've just started watching the the, talk, the, the talkies, talkies. <laughs> <laughs> um, out of order through clips on TikTok. If you watch one clip of a movie on TikTok, mm. your algorithm shows you the rest of the film oh. in segments that are aren't aren't in order. And that's who you're watching your movies? Yeah. Oh my god, that is the most <laughs> Gen Z thing I've ever heard. That I is... watched the whole of Green Book the other day in the wrong order. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. <laughs> I was like, this guy's gotten way more racist over the course of this film. <laughs> <laughs> this film isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what else? Wonder what other movies she could watch in the wrong order that would completely fuck it. I was like, wait, she's, she's, she's got two kids now. I thought it was just the one, Sophie's Choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Inception's already in the wrong order. Yes, that's probably th- that's probably the point, isn't it? I fucking hate Christopher Nolan. Why? It's not my bag. See if it takes you a year and a half to work out the timeline of a film. Yeah. How the fuck am I supposed to figure it out in one match? Because he's got bits in a drawer and he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with this? Yeah, I just no. think it's really indulgent filmmaking. It is. I love those Batman ones because it's all happens Do you mean just the Batman movies? No, the Christopher Nolan ones all are right. free. <laughs> I love those Batman Separate, movies. Separately, I love Batman. <laughs> Look at we old woman. Do you know them Batman ones? I love them. They're class. Really <laughs> so then that my two-year-old daughter's obsessed with Spider-Man, but in the the most modern way, doesn't watch it. Oh, is she? But she no, just, that's kids anyway. You just see one character that you latch on to. She just likes like T-shirts that have Spider-Man on them. She has a Spider-Man cup, a Spider-Man hat, a mm. Spider-Man figurine. But never does watched not watch it. it. I loved Dumbo when I was a kid. Dumbo, right. was my, I had a wee Dumbo toy. Um, and I watched the new one. It's fucking shit. Is there a new Dumbo? Yeah, like a live action Dumbo. No. And the second best actor is the cartoon elephant. Do you know what's mad when you watch stuff? Like if you ever watch like One of the Pooh now, like, a, like the OG One of the racist? Pooh. It's like 300 years old. No, but if you watch the Jungle Book, it says at the start, there's a, a, a warning. Oh, is it on the Netflix. birds? Is it the birds that are just like really racist depictions of black people? Yes. Brutal. And it says like oh, there's marginalized communities that are completely like torn apart in this movie, but we haven't changed it so that you can watch it and learn from it. That's what it says on yeah. Netflix. I think that's so funny. And you're like, no, you should probably take a get it get it away. Ah, oh, you're one of the people who wants to censor Roald Dahl books, are you? Roald Dahl. Can't be calm. <laughs> I'm in Shakespeare. You can go fuck. <laughs> like that's the thing when you were talking about Shakespeare. I think Shakespeare is shite, shite. Why? Too too much fussing about. I think it's class. Do ye? Yeah. I just think, why are you forcing people to speak in this rhythm? Because it's. It, it, you should be speaking in whatever way you individually speak. Not the iambic fucking pentameter. But most people speak in iambic pentameter. No, they don't. But there, there's a sentence there. Most people, most people speak in iambic. So you go if there's twelve. No. Yeah, but it doesn't always have to fit in. And when it, it doesn't fit in, it's when. But it doesn't have to be ten. This is the whole point of like. You lull, it's the same with jokes. They're not as explicit about it. We don't learn the rhythms of it. But iambic pentameter is someone just going, if the whole play goes, dee dum, 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 and then someone goes, dee dum, dee dum, then as an audience, you're in a rhythm and you're kind of grooving along with it. And then when something shocking happens, the rhythm, aside from the words, so it works on every level. If you don't fucking speak English, you know when something bad's happened in a Shakespeare. Yes, because people are crying. I'd but blow because my the rhythm out. changes no and you're like oh fuck and like it's just 
it's all about just causing those emotions. It's like songs, it's like playing in a minor key. When the pentameter falls apart, like the to be or not to be speech doesn't fit in diambic pentameter at all. Oh, does it not? Because his whole... Good. But <laughs> it's because his whole world is unraveling and therefore the rhythm yeah, of the fucked. play unra- unravels with it. I mean, there's Shakespeare breaking his own rules. Yes, for a fact... Well, then he that's... didn't make the rule. <laughs> <laughs> Did he not? No, it's like, but then you talked to like, there's a famous interview with John Gielgud, who's like supposed to be the best actor of Shakespeare ever. And somebody was like, oh, I saw you did this with the ambic pentameter and this stresses in this yeah. line. Why did <clears> you do that? And he went, I don't know what any of that means. Yeah, exactly. So he's he just, just saying the lines. He just did it, yeah. So that's the way to do I it. I think there's two ways to be a good actor. You can either know nothing or know everything. Mm-hmm. But if, see, if you get caught in the middle of knowing some stuff, you're crippled <clears> by not being entirely on top of it. You need to know it so well that you don't have to think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or not know it at all and, and just it's do natural. it instinctively. Did you ever watch Love Hate? No, maybe. What is that? It's like the Dublin gang drama. It was brilliant. No, it doesn't sound like my bag. But Tom Von Lothar was in that with Robert Sheehan. And Tom Von Lothar's a, like a classically trained actor. He's very well spoken. He's like D4 mm. Dublin, like really like a, just this like b- brilliant stage and theatre actor. Yeah, yeah. But plays this fucking false scumbag drug dealer. Like you wouldn't even know it's him. Like yeah, full yeah, transformation yeah. in this show. But he has a method and a process, and he's a pro- to get there, yeah, not yeah. a method actor, but he has a method. He has a yeah, process yeah. to to play roles. And he and I read an interview with him one time. And he was like, I would like spend so much time like becoming the character, learning my lines, mm. like f- figuring out a backstory to the character. And Robbie Sheehan would come in on two hours sleep and just like read the sides that morning, and then just do his bit and fuck off. And he'd be like magic. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like that's the difference. And like it doesn't mean that one's more talented than the other. It just means that one has more free time. Yeah, well, play PlayStation a bit. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, and do whatever. But even like Richard Harris and Peter O'Toole just getting fucking steaming all the time. I've remembered, because we mentioned Roald Dahl, what might be a good thing for my remember when thing that had an effect on my life. Yeah. Um, do you know The Witches? Yes. The movie, the Roald Dahl one? Yeah. Is that not the freakiest thing in the world, that film? Like, shouldn't be for kids. Yeah. If you go to the Sleeve Donard, it's basically The Witches. That, yeah. The whole big hotel that they go to their big meeting in, that's, look, like, to me, that's Freak the Sleeve Donard. The so, the first time <clears> we ever watched that was in primary school on like a Thursday afternoon we would have like golden hour where you'd like choose a VHS to everyone, was just, yeah, everyone was just pissing on each other everyone was just pissing all over each other there was a guy in, in P1 where this guy Aiden I remember I went to the toilet and it was one of those big wall urinals you know mm-hmm. so it's not like individual things mm-hmm. and we were like peeing up against it and he went watch this and then just spun in a circle while <laughs> it <laughs> Kids are wee dickheads, aren't they? I was just like, that's class! <laughs> and these are both just going, Woo! <laughs> Why did he want you to know that? It's just I wonder where he is now, McGabry. It expands, yeah, probably. Yeah, he's banged up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just but, in there going, Woo! That's so funny. We was a big piss. But, uh, so they, the class voted on the witches yeah. this one time, and I'd never seen it before, and I had a panic attack in the middle of it. I had like loads of panic attacks when I was a kid. Like, miss loads of school and stuff. Okay. Um, like, really severe anxiety. Oh, my God. Disorder and all a that child. Stuff. I'm a freak. Mm, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I, like, freaked out and had to, like, leave the classroom mm. and, like, sit in a mm. separate room and just do, like, worksheets or whatever. But then every week from that point onwards, because everyone found it so funny that I freaked out, the class voted to watch, watch the, witches the witches every week. So I just had to go do worksheets. Oh. By myself. Oh, that's so, so cruel. So I think that film should be illegal. That film is too I'm scary. So, I'm so, so they get their shoes board, off. Yeah. I'm so, and this, the scratchy, the, the bald yeah. heads, the purple eyes. Yeah, it's a lot for a child. I understand why you were afraid. I can't believe nobody else in your class was afraid. Wasn't afraid. Like, they were all okay with it. Yeah, I don't know. What would you have chosen to watch instead? Uh, what was what was the film I really liked when I was a kid? Dumbo. Big, yeah. Big fan of Dumbo. Yeah, but could you imagine everyone going, oh, this this wee queer wants to watch Dumbo <laughs> whereas the rest of us want to watch The Witches do you know what I mean yeah I don't know what, what would have been I remember there was a time in secondary school where the it was like last day before Christmas so we were just watching movies <clears> and <throat> the choice was Transformers or Mean Girls and all the at Christmas time yeah it was just watching movies fucking Christmas movies no fuck that December 22nd let's watch Transformers come on well, now nobody, well the, the the girls wanted to watch Transformers but all the boys wanted to watch Mean Girls because it's funny as fuck yeah and they get to see girls in skirts <laughs> that aren't the yeah, girls but in their class yeah, Megan Fox is in Transformers yeah. though oh, wow. do you remember when she was the hottest woman in the world and she now she doesn't it. exist she, now she doesn't exist 
<laughs> she's big style back. Oh yeah, she's with Machine she, Gun Kelly. Yeah. yeah, and she's a fox. Sucking on each other's tongues like the Dalai Lama. Yes, them two, and then Courtney Kardashian and your man, Travis Barker. All the tongue sucking. Yeah. And the Dalai Lama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Isn't it? It's so weird. Do you know what? I'm and just the, talking and about that. The notes up apology. Yeah. From the Dalai Lama. I, th- I, I do think it was one of those things like a week, like a granddad would do with his grandson. And then he went, oh, I got a hard on. <laughs> Oops. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, dear. What granddad sucks on his grandson's tongue? If he needs to pass him a word, there's original and he's not going to hands free. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that <laughs> so wrong right is there anything you want to plug before we go uh, I'm on tour uh, if you're there's tickets left in Galway and Limerick are the two Irish states if you're in Southampton or Cambridge or Darwin well, you're going to such strange places who picked the places your agent <laughs> me you why why the, are we looking at your like uh, analytics or what yeah I, Southampton and Cambridge just because I wasn't doing anything like around London I had shows in London but nothing around and I was correct I don't have fans there <laughs> <laughs> that's why you haven't been doing things Darwin is just outside Manchester because the lady who's helping me with all the admin for the tour she works in a theatre there so I was like well we'll do a show okay. at your venue so you can essentially get paid twice for it okay um, so I thought that would be nice and it sold okay but there's those and then Mike and Vittorio's Guide to Parenting that's my podcast yeah um, neither of us have kids we'll link it I know that that's very funny that you don't have kids people get so angry it's not funny that you don't have kids that's, that's so I, funny that, that you could don't be have sad <laughs> <laughs> so funny you're on Fairtown but it's just like we just called it that because we thought what's the funniest thing what's yeah, the stupidest yeah, yeah. thing and we've attracted quite a good audience of young mums I love if people are like like, do you know, like so for instance whenever my uncle got me Pocahontas whenever for Christmas one year with mm. the video and I sat That's probably through, like, racist as well now isn't oh it? definitely like you, could, you couldn't like it's oh, yeah, they're all going, oh, 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 oh. yeah and like the white man's coming to ruin the ruin the <laughs> fucking cut down the trees and all um, but like the I sat please through, don't clip me doing that no no, 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 no. Just isolate that bit let me get some more fun. Um, and I watched all the songs, right? And it was like an hour and a half in. And I was all, what the fuck is this? And I, tr- and I was ripping. And it turns out he had gotten me the karaoke version. And I was like, just, uh... just happened to be on the front. And I was just like waiting for something that was never going to happen. <sighs> and that was relevant to what you just, oh, it's like, I love the fact that there's probably loads of mums and dads signing yeah. up to that. And they're like 10 episodes in going, any minute now, they'll start to give us we proper, literally don't mention proper it good all. advice. And that's so funny. Somebody... Some like parenting expert pitched themselves to come on as a guest. Yeah. And we think we're going to have her on. Oh, amazing. Because she's never listened to an episode, but she sent us this massive blurb about all her expertise in like homeschooling she's and quite this specific type of homeschooling. It. Just like how her producer has gone on and been Bring like, her on and never let her speak about any of the things that she wants to like. Is that too it, mean? No, I, I want to be like bullying no, I think this it's, woman. I, but then but tell she her should have done her research. Yeah. So we'll be like, yeah, come on the podcast. We'd love to have you. But you could just say it's crossed wires. If she goes, oh, I thought I was coming on to talk about like parenting. And you'd be like, why would you think that? We thought you were coming on because you just wanted to be here <laughs> to talk about socks. It's in my flap as well, just on the sofa. We don't even have yeah, a studio. That feels a wee bit wrong, doesn't it? But I think, I, I think we're going to have her on. I think that'd just be so funny to just get actual legit parenting experts on. Yeah. Me and Mike just fucking And just ask for the inappropriate shit. questions. <laughs> Yeah. But the hell? Quite offensive accents the most of the time. You suck on his tongue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we end every podcast. Um, we'll put the link to your tickets and stuff. That would be nice. And the... be nice. Oh, I'm at the Edinburgh Fringe. If anybody's in Edinburgh, I'm taking up my new show, Who Do You Think You Are? I Am, uh, all of August. Who Do You Think You Are? I Am? Yeah. Why is that? What's the I Am about? It comes from, see, nobody's seen this video. I've named, have you seen the viral video? Fuck! I named it after a viral video that nobody's seen. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, t- I talk about it on stage and it, it's, it's a good bit now that we're explaining that nobody gets the title of my show. But my next show after that's going to be called Being Alive is a Fucking Nightmare. Oh, really? Because I think that's... Have you seen that one? But uh, you might be dead by then, which would be even funnier. Hopefully. <laughs> if you were. No, is that, a, is that a, another video? The only viral video I can quote is Leave Britney Alone. <laughs> you Surely you can do Charlie Bit My Finger. Charlie Bit My Finger. But you can do... Be- have you not seen Being Alive is a Fucking Nightmare? No. Can you tag it on to the end of this? Because it's the funniest video in the world. It's a steaming guy in Belfast going, oh, where is everybody? And then this weird guy from Belfast who's got like Elvis hair and sideburns and is wearing a leather jacket walks up behind <laughs> and goes, here, being alive is a fucking nightmare. And that is And then brilliant. just walks into the distance. Yeah. And no one knows who he is. Just having a fuck in the name of your title uh, make it difficult. To I'll s- start. I know, but like, are, do venues be weird about that now? 
I don't care. If a venue's going to be weird about that, I'll do it somewhere else. Stick it to the man. I hate everybody. (laughs) Yeah. I'm so (laughs) anti-establishment. I'll put a star in my fuck. (laughs) So (laughs) anti-establishment. Represented by Avalon. (laughs) (laughs) Newcomer award. I know. I keep trying to be a fucking punk rocker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They just keep wanting me. me. (laughs) I'm like, no, push back. Cancel me, please. <laughs> right, Victoria, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for I having wish me. you all the best on your tour and stop sucking kids' tongues. <laughs> <laughs>